I'm Shauna Rappaport, Vice President and Executive Director of Verge with Green Biz Group, and I'm joined by Edwin Anderson, who is a partner at Oliver Wyman. Welcome, Edwin. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for being with us. So, risk is something that is a really big theme here at Green Biz 20 this week. Talk a little bit about your work at a high level with Oliver Wyman, your role within the company, and how you're seeing the definition of risk changing. Edwin Anderson work as a partner within our risk practice primarily. And I look at all different kinds of risks and help companies think about it, think about the opportunities, about the strategic implications, about the ways that they can offset, mitigate, and manage those risks. And Oliver Wyman looked maybe about four or five years ago at what the largest emerging risks facing companies over the next few years would be, and climate really stuck out to us. So early on, started working, including our work with the UN Environmental Program Finance Initiative, to start building out the frameworks to better manage and understand those risks. And something we've seen is a transition. We're seeing what we think of as kind of ESG risks, and I want to separate that from there's ESG impact, kind of do good for the world, but ESG risks, am I exposed to water scarcity, to social instability, to issues of commodities I can no longer get? Those risks are becoming more and more the new normal. There's a basic expectation that those are managed, and you're seeing companies like BlackRock or PIMCO take very public stances of the importance, and in fact, you'd even say fiduciary responsibility to look after these kinds of risks. And that mindset is growing and growing. Um, someone at the Greenfin Summit before GreenBiz called it 21st century risk, which I think is an appropriate term. So let's talk a little bit about those risks and specifically the, the tools and how you're working with companies to help them better understand their exposure. Yeah, uh, probably it's best to use a couple of examples because companies are quite different and have very different exposures. So let's maybe think about a case of a bank. It's a good example because they were some of the first to move heavily into it. If they are lending money on a mortgage, they have to be thinking about the implications to that property about, for example, physical risks to it, which are somewhat more nuanced because for one thing, we're used to the idea, oh yeah, my bank asks me to get insurance. It asks me to get fire insurance. It asks me if appropriate to get flood insurance. But people are having to think ahead now because in California, the insurance companies are saying, we're just not going to offer you fire insurance anymore. You're not insurable. This idea of no longer being insurable. And we also inadequately fund in the United States flood insurance um, map improvements. And because of that, and because they're, they're backwards looking, looking ahead to which areas are going to be exposed to flood in the future is something more and more important for that person underlying the mortgage to say, what are the real risks to hazards like this? And how do I think forward about whether these will be things I can protect myself against? And Oliver Wyman specifically is, is beginning to work increasingly with sort of advanced technologies and tools to better map and understand those risks. Help us understand that changing landscape. Yeah. So there are kind of two pieces of it, and there's the, the techniques, I would say, are not the ones necessarily companies are used to, but in a lot of the most important ones are actually pretty fundamental, and they're about people and organization. Because in the end, often the expertise in these things within companies is very far away from the people who actually have the power to make decisions about how companies do things. When it comes to what I call the more underlying technical tools, there are the people like our MMC colleagues work a lot with the broad hazard models used by the insurance industry to look at these risks. But even there, you have to layer additional thought on top of those because even those are what one would call now casting. They talk about the risks today, but they're not very good at asking about how risk might evolve in the future. So bridging that gap and then Bridging the internal organizational gaps is critical if you're going to have a meaningful conversation because our, we think that companies should be getting a benefit out of these processes of thinking through strategy and opportunity and risk mitigation when I think many have approached it as simply 
another disclosure burden, a thing somebody made me do. And they asked someone in investor relations, can, can you make this go away? And it's one more cost that they get nothing out of when the companies that have seized on it have benefited greatly. Well, so that's interesting. And what I was going to get at was sort of my final question. Our audience at GreenBiz tends to be sustainability professionals working within large companies. What sort of as a closing thought would be your advice to folks who work in traditional sustainability roles about how to talk to their risk people and the opportunity lens? What would your advice be? Essentially, you want to learn the language of your colleagues in other departments and how to create that interface. So for example, some folks talk about, as I referred to earlier, ESG impact. This is good for the world. In the end, your C-suite is fundamentally probably going to be swayed by dollars. Can you talk about the PR benefits of that and get people to see those implications? If you see a hazard to your company because you think water scarcity may change the ability to deliver the water you need for your process, you need to turn that into a set of risks and have those conversations with the people who manage those risks in terms they understand of commodities and dollars and risks. And again, that just requires a change in how you communicate and a pivot. Because what we've seen is the successes that are happening are when there's an allegiance between one of the, say, kind of core dollars and cents departments, risk or strategy typically, and sustainability, building a partnership to move forward and do something for the company. Well, that's a fantastic message and certainly something that you and your colleagues at Oliver Wyman are helping to advance in these critical times. I'm sure risk and resilience and the importance of this work is um, certainly for better or worse only going to be increasing. So we look forward to continuing to have these conversations with you and, and helping the, the, the field evolve. Edwin Anderson of, uh, of Oliver Wyman, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here today.